Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Prem Shikaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitalanda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopina Shri Mukun Radha Kun Giri Govardhan Ki Jai. Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai. Shri Mayapur Namatri Dham Ki Jai. Shri Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai. Jagannath Swami Baladev Subhadra Ki Jai. Gaur Premanande. All glories to the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. All glories to the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. All glories to the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. All glories, all glories to Sri Sri Guru Garanga. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai. Oh, glories to Namaste Saraswati Deva Gurumani Pacharni Shishu Shukhani 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 So, this is our, or my last evening darsha in Chile. I guess tomorrow you guys will do evening darsha. Somehow or other. <laughs> That's our favorite, my favorite spiritual method. Somehow or other. Oh, but Krishna's crazy. Jeez. Oh. Uh. Any of this motion just immediately like, puts my arm in a, in a swing. So, I wonder if, how many people we got signed in today? Today we've got a total of 15. Oh, good. I wonder if anybody has any questions from last night. We had so few questions last night. And we were talking about like really far out stuff, you know. How is it possible that we didn't have any questions? Does anybody have any questions about anything? <laughs> Why is Krishna blue? What's that funny paint on your face? <laughs> Why do you wear white? Hi <laughs> Krishna. Can I get rasa by Zen meditation? Oops. <laughs> What's that? Need to clean my nose. Oops. Oh. It got locked. Well, I guess we can't have any questions. Who would have asked to clean his nose? <laughs> would you see if there's any questions on the chat? Not yet. No questions. I can't believe this. It's like nobody's thinking. Nobody is thinking about this, this nectar of devotion. This, yes, I am. All I this have stuff. a question, actually. He has a question. You mentioned that um, uh, when you were re reading the neck of devotion, that um, all the qualities uh, in uh, Krishna, up to 60 qualities, we can have them too in mind. Up to 50. Up to 50. 50. Yes. Yeah. And uh, what I was wondering, you also mentioned that um, when we remove all our uh, com uh, material contamination, and we will find out what our real qualities are. And now this is the tricky part, because we already contain those 50, and now how is it possible that we have, like, uh, w what's the difference between those 50 and... Oh, 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 don't get all hung up on numbers and stuff. Oh, okay. All right. Srila Rupa Goswami, he wants to make the point that the jivas can possess up to 74% of the qualities of the Supreme in some small amount. You know, th this means definitely that the jivas are emanated by the Supreme. Otherwise, how could we possess those qualities? Where would we get them? You know, because we see in the material world that, you, you know, like I was explaining last night, even if a person has so-called good qualities, they're actually bad. Because they lead them away from devotional service 
and more entangled in material life. So, on the other hand, a person who has bad qualities, so-called bad qualities, if they can somehow or other, here is that word again, engage them in the service of the Lord, then those qualities become good. Okay. So, when I was talking about a, a, a jiva's unique personal qualities, I mean the, the type of things that make you the person you are. Your taste, for example. Your taste, you know? Like, some people like modern abstract art. Some people like old masters. Some people like photo photography more than painting. Some people like sculptures. Some people like, you know, different things. And they say there's no accounting for taste. In other words, there's no test that you can give a person when they're seven years old that's going to tell you what kind of art they're going to like when they grow up. Uh, that's a, a matter of the personal, um, you know, their own personal judgment, their own likes and dislikes. Mm -hmm. Okay, So there are many qualities that we have like that. Uh, the particular uh, kind of food that we like, for example. Some people like, like I like very hot very spicy food. Other people, they can't take that. You know? And, uh, you know, I, I like jazz music. I like, it, it, if it doesn't have more than 10 or 12 chords in it, it's boring to me. You know? Whereas some people, if it has more than three chords, it's like, oh, yeah, too complicated. <laughs> you know? It's just a matter of taste. And they, these tastes, of course, they reflect different modes of material nature and stuff like that. But that's not what I'm getting into right now. What, I, what I'm talking about right now is that the individual living being has a particular kind of, of taste in his relationship with Krishna. And that taste, for example, oh, here's a good example. The left-wing gopis and the right-wing gopis. We were talking about that earlier today. The right-wing gopis are headed by Chandravali, and they're very submissive to Krishna. They're like, Krishna, whatever you want. You know, we don't care. You treat us like dolls or whatever you want to do. But then the left-wing gopis headed by Srimati Radharani, their mood is completely different. Their mood is, you know, Krishna, you better treat Radha well, or, you know, you're, you're going to be in the doghouse. You're not going to get any. Uh, you won't even get to see Radha. You don't respect her. You have to pay your obeisances to her right now. Queen of Vrindavan. Huh? Yeah. Lalita, especially. Lalita and Vishaka. Boy, they're like the enforcers, you know? <laughs> so, their mood, the left-wing gopis, they're both in conjugal love mood. They both have enjoy very intimate pastimes of conjugal love with Krishna. But the mood of the two wings are completely different. Uh, and we read in, in some of the plays by Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami that these, these loving pastimes, they encompass every imaginable taste of conjugal love. See? Sometimes Krishna is the dominant Partner. Sometimes the gopis are the dominant partner. You know, it sometimes it get, gets really kinky. You know, so you know whatever there is, whatever taste there is that can be enjoyed in conjugal love, Krishna has invented that and is the root of that and is the origin of that taste. Okay, and Krishna's pastimes with the gopis display all of those qualities. And some are more prominent than others, of course. Uh, like the pastimes with the queens in Dorka. They're very much the, the template for what our relationships are expected to be like. You know, we're supposed to be faithful, be married, uh, you know, have mutual respect and, and all like this, and have some reserve, some uh, little bit of distance between the husband and the wife. So Krishna, he, he gives all of those, he gives the example of all of those kinds of behavior. But in his, his pastimes with the gopis are much wilder. 
much freer. Huh? There's much more different variety of relationships expressed in those pastimes and so on. So, similarly, I mean, who is Krishna going to enjoy all those different tastes with? He has to have devotees who enjoy all those different tastes so that he can enjoy them. See? And like we pointed out yesterday, uh, the spiritual world and the material world are like mirror images of one another. The things that are considered very low and very, um, you know, uh, nasty or whatever in the, in the material world, uh, like having a, un, affairs with unmarried ladies or other people's wives or like that, in the spiritual world they're considered the highest. Even though these things in the material world lead to degradation.